Okay, so section 15.2 continues. Uh, the next question is question number 13, which says that limit x approaches to 5, 4x minus 20 divided by 3x squared minus 7x plus 5. So we have to find out the indicated limit. We can see that the down one, if you put 5, is not 0, the denominator. So we can separately apply the limit on the numerator and on the denominator. Now again, we know the rules. Uh, 4 is a constant, which is multiplying to x. So we take out the 4 and apply the limit on the x. And minus 20, since it's a constant, so I do not want to apply the limit on it and just write it down by the property of the limit is 20. Similarly, you can apply on the denominator ones. So that is 3x squared. We take out 3 and apply the limit on the x squared. From minus 7x, we take out 7 and apply the limit on x. And since 5 is a constant, so we just write down the constant because the limit of a constant number is the exact same constant. Right? Now you apply the limit. So 4 times x, which is 5, minus 20. And then you apply for x5 and for x5 over here. And then you multiply, that gives you 20 minus 20, and that gives you 75. 25, 5 squared is 25 times 3 is 75. And 7 times 5 is 35, and 5. So that gives you 0 plus 20 minus 20 gives you 0. 0 by anything becomes 0. Question number 14 says that the limit x approaches to minus 2 of this function is again uh, in the numerator and denominator form, p or uh, q form. So we can apply the limit on the above and on the below numerator or denominator and denominator. So now since 10 is a constant, so we will write down 10 as it is because the limiting value would be uh, 10. Then minus, minus, and then you apply the limit on the x squared separately. Now the next thing is this one. So 5 is a constant, we take it out. Um, and then minus, minus, this is 8x. So from the rules, the constant comes out of the limiting value and apply the limit on the variable x. Similarly from 2x squared, we take out 2 and apply the limit on the x squared. Now simply apply the values. 10 minus, instead of x, we will write minus 2 whole square. And then 5 minus 8 times instead of x minus 2 plus 2 and x square is minus x. So if you calculate this gives you 10 minus 4 and 5 plus 16 plus 8 and that gives you 6 over 29. Question number 15. Um, it is using a different property now. Two functions are multiplying. So the property, if you have one function and two functions and they're multiplying and you apply the limit on it, you can apply the limit on both of them separately and still they will multiply. So what we can do is we have one this function and one this function. So we will we'll apply the limit on both of them separately and multiply them. So we apply the limit on this function into the apply the limit on this function. Now again using the old property 6 comes in front or you take it out and apply the limit on x cubed. 2 comes in front, you apply the limit on the x. And then multiplication, then 5 comes in front and you apply the limit on x. And minus 10 is a constant, so we the limit of a constant is the same constant. So we write that as it is. Now 6 as it is, and then you apply the limiting value minus 3 for x. So we have minus 3 power 3 plus 2 as it is. Instead of x, we write minus 3. 5 as it is. Instead of x, we write minus 3. And this is as it is. Minus 3 times... Uh, minus 3 in 3 times gives you minus 27. You multiply into 6 gives you 162. And uh, 2 times minus 3 gives you minus 6. 5 times minus 3 gives you minus 15. Minus 10 as it is. If you add them up, that gives you minus 25. This gives you minus 68 and minus 25. You multiply them, you get 44. Uh, 2, 2, 4,200. Okay, question number 16 is a little bit complicated. So you have... Uh, two function, one is this one and the other is this one and they are multiplying. So first we will apply the property of multiplying. You apply the limit on this function into the limit on this function. Now this is again the numerator and denominator or above and below function. So we, if you put 5 over here, the below is not 0, so we can apply the limit 
above and below so you can apply the limit above on this function and below on this one and you can straight away apply the limit on this one on x square and minus 12 is a constant so if you apply the limit it gives you minus 12 anyway now this one is if i apply the limit on the x you can uh, write them separately i'm just doing it in shortcuts now because you know already, you already know how to solve them so you apply the lim the limit 5 in in, pl in place of x 5 and 3 as it is and in this one 5 and 6 as it is and if you apply a limit 5 over here the square of 5 is 25 and minus 12 so that gives you 8 or 11 and 25 minus 12 gives you 13 if you multiply them it gives you 104 divided by 11 in question number 17 again you can apply the limit above on the above function and on the below function separately 2x plus 7 now I will not write them separately I'm just straight away applying the limit so uh, minus 4 square 8 times minus 4 and minus 14 will come as it is and if I apply limit here that will be minus 4 and 7 as it is so that is 16 that is minus 32 and minus 14 and that gives us minus 8 plus 7 so if you calculate them minus minus 6 36 uh, minus 36 plus 16 gives you minus 20 or minus 1 so that gives you 20 oh sorry that is 46 46 minus 16 gives you minus 30 so that is plus 30 now question number 18 is again we apply the limit on above or on the near numerator and apply the limit on the denominator now again I will just straight away apply the limit so instead of x we will write x square we will write 1 square plus 3 instead of x we will write 1 and minus 24 as it is for x we will write down 1 and minus 3 as it is so that gives us 1 plus 3 minus 24 divided by minus 2 so 4 minus 24 gives you minus 20 divided by minus 2 minus minus cancel that gives us value of 10 okay in these problems now if you see that if you put x is equals to minus 4 over here so minus 4 plus 4 gives you 0 it means that the limit x approaches to minus 4 x plus 4 is 0 so if you have denominator 0 you cannot apply limit above and below so once you have uh, this thing you have to check whether this um, this these this function can be further simplified or not and for that one uh, other reason is if you have if you apply the limit and above and below both are 0 it means you can simplify this further so if you can look at this one we can simplify this one is x whole square and minus 4 whole square x plus 4 and we know a formula which is called a square minus b square can be written as a plus b and a minus b so you can uh, compare this one with this one you have a is x and b is 4 so we can write this down by x plus 4 a plus b and x minus 4 now we can see that this will cancel with this one so you are left with only x approaches to minus 4 x minus 4 which is a very simple one so you apply the limit on this one so we apply the limit x is equals to minus 4 on the x one and since 4 is a constant so it will give us the value uh, 4 now if i apply the limit for x we write down minus x uh, minus 4 and that is minus minus 4 minus 4 gives you minus 8 now this one is again a similar question if I put minus 9 over here this gives me 0 and if I put minus 9 over here this gives me 81 minus 81 0 so if this is the form it means it can be further simplified so we can simplify this as we can write this as a square of 9 and a square of x and 9 plus x again according to the formula 
uh, this would be 9 plus x and 9 minus x and 9 plus x in the denominator. So this will cancel this one. And then we apply the limit only on 9 minus x. Now 9 is a constant, so it stays as it is. And if you apply the limit on the x only, so 9 minus n instead of writing x, we will write down the its value, limiting value. So that gives us 9 plus 9, and 9 plus 9 is 18. Now in this one you can see that the limiting value x is approaches to c, some constant. So simply you can apply the limit x approaches to c on the x cube. The constant terms you can take them out and you don't need to apply the limit on the constant. So you have 4 c cubed minus 5 c squared plus 10. So you can write this as 4 c cubed minus 5 c squared plus 10. And that's the answer. Now this is the last question of these type of questions. So again you apply the limit on each of the parts separately. Limit x approaches to minus d. Again x approaches to minus d of x. And 3 is a constant so we don't apply the limit on that or you just get the same value. So that's why we don't apply the limit on it. Minus 2 times minus d and plus 3. So the d minus d square is d square and minus minus gives you a plus, so plus 2d and plus 3 and that is the answer. Thank you very much.